Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a hybrid sourdough granary loaf. It's gonna blow anything, anything that you've bought from the shop straight off the shelves. And in actual fact, the recipe is super, super simple. The secret, the key, is to find a flour blend that just knocks your socks off. Now, I'm gonna show you how you can mill your own at home, but you can equally find great flour blends from local mills. Now, classically, this loaf was made using malted wheat, but I'm gonna inject even more flavor by using malted barley and malted rye, all in combination with honey and milk. We're gonna produce a super, super soft loaf with toasted aromas of honey, caramel, toffee, and chocolate. Right, so into my bowl goes 292 grams of full fat milk. Now this is cold, it's come straight from the fridge. Now this milk, it's gonna to contribute to a soft crumb, but it also pairs perfectly with the multi grains that we're gonna be using in this recipe. Next, I'm dissolving 10 grams of salt into the milk and just giving it a gentle stir with a spoon. Now this flour blend, this is at the epicenter of the entire recipe. I'm using strong bread flour as the base with home milled whole wheat flour to boost the depth of flavor and of course give it a little boost in nutrition too. Now I finally milled some malted barley which is gonna distribute the honey, caramel and toffee flavors throughout the dough nicely. But I'm also adding some cracked malted barley and some cracked malted rye for textural and visual interest. Even in small quantities, the rye, it brings this fruity, chocolatey flavor to the loaf. So now I'm gonna add roughly half the flour blend into the milk to create this porridgey consistency and that's immediately followed by 15 grams of honey. Now the fuel for this loaf, it comes from two different leavening agents. First, we've got a sourdough leaven. That's gonna bring a light, creamy sourness and bags of complexity to this loaf. I'm also using a pre-ferment. This is made with commercial yeast. This is gonna give the fermentation a boost, but it's also gonna help create a bit of a softer final product. So in goes 97 grams of our ripe sourdough leaven and 97 grams of our pre-ferment. These are gonna get really well beaten through the porridgey mixture just to make sure that it is super well mixed. Now we can add in the rest of the flour, we're gonna give it one final mix. We just keep watching, we keep an eye on our dough because as we mix, we can see those creamy colors of the pre-ferments disappear as we mix it properly. And then once we're confident, it's all done and dusted, we can cover the bowl and leave it to rest. Now, I should mention it is smoking hot in my kitchen at the moment, so the dough is gonna be fermenting in my chamber at 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, so after 30 minutes, I'm gonna give this one final mix on the bench, but before we turn this out, we are not gonna miss the opportunity to take on board the full aroma of this dough. You get hit with this singed, toasty aroma that's kind of followed by the honey, the caramel, and of course that malty chocolate. You have got to make this recipe to fully understand the complexity of this dough. Now I'm just gonna use the heel of my hand to make sure it's well mixed. Don't expect the dough to have any strength whatsoever at this stage. In fact, it may even be a touch sticky, but don't worry, that's all gonna disappear once the flour and the grains have fully hydrated. Now, after about a minute of mixing, I'm gonna ball this up again, pop it back into my bowl, I'm gonna cover it, it's gonna go back in my chamber, and it's gonna rest. Right, so the dough has been fermenting all for about an hour and a half, and at this point, I'm just gonna give it a gentle stretch and then reshape the dough. Now, it's not a strong dough, so there is absolutely no point in trying to laminate it and pull it all the way across the bench. But this does give me the opportunity to get to know the dough a little bit better and to understand how it's progressing with the fermentation. Now, you may not be able to smell this dough, but I do hope that that multi-color is giving you a damn good idea of the aroma that's coming off of this dough. And that's it. Now I'm just gonna leave the dough alone to finish its bulk fermentation. Right, so we're gonna bake this in a bread tin. Now while this is non-stick, I always like to give it just a quick wipe with olive oil, just to make sure there is absolutely no danger of my loaf sticking to the tin. Now consider this, our dough has been dual fueled by a sourdough culture and a yeasted pre-ferment. And yet, we've had this relaxed fermentation that's taken around five hours or so. Now at this stage, the dough is a little bit tacky and you may find it easier just to dust your worktop with a touch of flour before shaping, but the process is simple. We're just gonna gently push the dough down, we're gonna fold in the sides 
and then firmly roll up the dough. Now it feels nice and puffy, but not super inflated like some commercially yeasted doughs. Now after gently pulling in the ends of the dough, we're gonna pop it into the tin seam side down. We're gonna leave it to prove until it reaches the top of our tin. Right, so it's taken two hours for the dough to rise up, so it's just peaking over the top of the tin. So what's it had? A total of seven hours to develop flavor, and boy, can you smell it. Now this is gonna bake on a baking stone in the oven that's been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius for a total of 40 minutes. Now I'm just gonna slide a baking tray between the top of that tin and the heating element, and that's gonna shield our dough from the direct heat. And this, this is the result of our efforts. The crust is toasty. The crumb is really soft. It's not what you'd expect from sourdough, and yet it still tastes sour in this mellow, yogurty kind of way. But you cannot taste any commercial yeast whatsoever. You get the honey, the caramel, the toffee, the chocolate that I was talking about earlier. And of course, you've got those malted grains that give this slightly chewy texture. Right, so now it's up to you to go and get this one baked. And I, I will see you again very soon. So stay tuned.